Thank you for downloading the Make and Break podcast. For more information, visit us at makebreakshow.com. This is Make and Break. We're on. Did it start a new recording? Uh, but it started a new track. Oh, yeah, okay. That's what it does. Lovely day for a drive. Driving past the B&L Camp Store on the way to Wilderness Park. We're not going there, though. Where are we going, Chairman? We're going to Legs Inn. Woohoo! Whee! I'm thinking about eating a pierogi or two. Maybe even some Polish beer. You know, I, I haven't, I've never uh, had food there. I've only gone out drinking there late. Excuse me. All right, so we're doing a bit of an experiment here. Uh, people these days have this big, uh, big thing about uh, mayhem on the roads and the, the uh, uh, car insurance commercials, and uh, also distracted driving is a big thing on everybody's mind. Uh, it might be why it might why, get it off your mind. Pay attention to the road. <laughs> right. So I'm driving down a very twisty road, uh, driving amongst uh, tri- uh, <laughs> uh, 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 RVs and whatnot, swerving around. Oh, there's a baby. I won't hit that. And uh, other other than that, we're just recording in a different venue. Uh, this Today's venue happens to be a Baby Diarrhea Green Mercury Sable 2002. Uh, dual overhead cam sucks gas like you wouldn't believe and uh, is no more faster than my 318 Dodge Coronet that I once had. Uh, it's got leather seats though and lumbar support. The Dodge had absolutely zero lumbar support. In fact, they that car was so old they didn't even know what a lumbar was. I don't think I do now. Uh, lumbar is a alloy made of wood. Mm, I thought it was it's part lumber, of the body. but more. Ah, it doesn't warp. They should call it Lum More. Club Sandwich. It's a BLT, but more. I've said it once, I've, I'll say it again. <laughs> I just, so, uh... That's I, no moon. Look, the moon's still up there. It's 11.59 in the, in the morning, and it's the moon's hanging out. God, I love it. I love being above, above the 45th parallel, where the, 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 the days are very, very long, surrounded yeah. by arboreal forests. Are there other kind of forests? Petrified forests, I suppose. Yeah, but it, I, I, it's it's still arboreal. Yeah, at one time it was, but now it's rock. So the plan is, we're going to uh, do a couple of segments here driving in the car. We're on our way to Legs Inn right now, and uh, might do a recording down on the beach at Legs Inn, maybe not. And then uh, we're going to make our way to Petoskey, Michigan, where. I need to make a few purchases and, I don't know, maybe pick up some hookers and blow. You know what's nice about the hookers in Petoskey? Everything. Well, that's the thing, is instead of dressing up like a bunch of hoes, they're, they, they, I like how they, I like, they're always wearing like Patagonia fleeces. <laughs> right. You know? They got may, maybe a bandana, you know, got, uh, khaki shorts, you know? Fleece is a fleece, even if you got it by sucking dick. Sometimes hot pants. That's- aren't going to be the thing that you want and you kind of want to go oh you rock climb and suck cock for money for money that's cool <laughs> the, well although I have had issues though uh, sometimes uh, before they take your money they want to go uh, to the park and do extreme frisbee or uh, and listen to Dave Matthews <laughs> oh we uh, got old people in the middle of the road must think it's Mackinac Island. It's funny because usually they swing very far to the left or right. Yeah, well, that lady was in the middle of the road, probably not realizing that this is a 55 mile an hour road, and I could have. Did. Okay, the other day I was riding my bike down the road, and I saw elderly people in the street, and I got to thinking to myself, and this crosses my mind from time to time. You know, Grandma is fragile. She has fragile bones. You always want to be careful around Grandma. But sometimes I have these thoughts of like Grandma is not only like fragile of bone density, 
but fragile with everything. Like if you poked her too hard, you like push through her skin. <laughs> right. Kind of like that guy in RoboCop that got said, got dropped into the vat of acid, and then he's like, "Help me!" And then the guy in the van blasts into him, and the guy just explodes. Like if I hit Grandma, oh no, Oma! I hit her with the bike. Is she gonna just like a? And she's just this ball of liquid. And now I gotta explain that to. Opa about how, yeah, I'm sorry about that. She <laughs> got nothing to explain to anybody. She walked out in front of me, get, get, I apologize. Get, get out of the road, Grandma. You ever try to watch Grandma off a bike? <laughs> Why am I thinking I didn't take the right road? Yeah. There is a... I somehow made a wrong turn. Absolutely. Somehow I got into the fucking park. <laughs> Remember when he said, that's not where we're going? Yeah. That's where we're going. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a motor vehicle permit. I'm not dealing. Oh, I just took a wrong turn. Now I'm backing up. <laughs> I'm going to break out the Book of Armaments here. I, I think I know where you went wrong. There's a store. I don't remember ever making the left turn, though. The stuffed cabbage was pretty good, huh? Yeah, yeah, I dug it. Uh, yeah, I'd never had Polish food before. It was pretty tasty. We just left legs in. Uh, did we sit out on the patio and enjoy the nice 79 degree weather in northern Michigan? Heavens no, we sat inside the 85 degree dark bar uh, because I'm too stupid to realize that they have a nice patio to sit on. But nonetheless, we had stuffed peppers and uh, I had a couple of pierogies. Uh, and it was fabulous, ran into old friends, uh, it's funny to see uh, high school friends, and it's funny to see Mackinac Island people that aren't on Mackinac Island. Now we're traveling down the Tunnel of Trees. The tree tunnel, if you will. In the Sable. Uh, we just finished discussing bicycles made of hobby horses, and avoiding being struck down by deer, corvettes, and... Bitchin' Camaros. Bitchin' Camaros. This is a lovely, this is a, a, a fun drive. I have no idea what the speed limit is. There's no center marker lane, uh, line. Uh, occasionally you'll see sharp turn signs with the suggested speed of 25 miles an hour, which frightens the hell out of me because I can just imagine that if that's the case, then the speed limit is more than that. And uh, here's a turn with a 35. 35. So conceivably the speed limit on this road is 35 miles an hour. The road isn't any wider than 15 feet and quite twisty and quite tunnely with the trees. There was one time I was driving down, oh, there's a 45 mile an hour speed limit sign. Fascinating. Uh, it was like down this stretch driving down this road and this deer was standing in the middle of the road and the road is so narrow we couldn't pass the deer because it was in the middle of the road and it was trotting. Ah. And so it was just running alongside of us. Or right in front of us. Did you reach out and pet it? I poked in the ass with a taser. Well, like I said, we just left legs in. Had a great time. We're on our way to Harbor Springs. And then down to Petoskey. Gonna stop by a Walgreens, take advantage of the one hour photo developing. One hour. If it takes any longer than that, I'm gonna write my congressman. What if it takes less? Are you gonna write him? Uh, a strongly worded letter of approval. Pleasurable scratching. Oh, an excellent topic. A thought crossed my mind the other day. Sometimes scratching an itch feels really, really good. It always feels good. But what I found interesting is it seems to me that the more sensitive and tender the skin, the better the scratch feels. But it feels so good that you can possibly get over enthusiastic about your scratching and then wear yourself raw oh, okay yeah. imagine yourself as a little kid mosquito bite on the backside of your knee yeah very itchy but man does it feel good to scratch it but because that skin is really soft you can really tear the hell out of the back of your knee I want to know how many people listening to this right now are scratching none because no one listens <laughs> Now, what made me think of this the other day? No one wants to, no one wants to listen to a podcast that makes them itch. 
I'm allergic. <laughs> God, I listen to those guys and I break out in hives. Back of your knee, that's an innocent way to segue into what <clears throat> I'm getting at. Right. Because the reality of where I'm going is a little bit more ridiculous. Apparently, the UPS guy sometimes takes the scenic route. Itchy butthole. Oh, worst. Well, if it's your actual butthole. You itch the actual butthole? The outside of the butthole. Yeah. Sometimes that is, like, feels really fucking good. But you can't be sitting there scratching your butthole. <laughs> One, it's like, what, what the fuck are you doing? I'm scratching my butthole. It feels really fucking good. <laughs> you sicko. What the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. Also, but that's very tender skin. Okay, here's this too. Your cock. I think I've been there. Maybe you have about a dry skin. It's healing up. It's going away. Yeah. Not masturbatory. No. It's the most pleasurable scratching ever without even being, even close to being masturbatory. You know what's funny though is right next door to that... I think the most unpleasurable scratch is the balls. No, the balls are the worst because you ever get that itch on the skin? Like I can't I can't just grab my fingers and just like tear into the balls, you know, like push up against the balls for No, you got to like pinch the skin. I don't know. Ah, I got you. Okay, same kind well, of thing. Right. You know what I mean? You got to like pinch it and you're like this is weird. I don't like this. Well, that was a thought that I had. Yeah, we all have those thoughts. I don't think it's discussed enough. See, I'm just saying it out loud, especially into a recording, makes me feel dirty for even mentioning it, but I know everyone knows what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. But nobody wants to discuss it. Everyone's got buttholes. They all itch. Not constantly. I'm not saying everybody's... Yeah, I'm just saying. And I'm not talking about, like, jamming a finger in your butthole. No, no, no. Just It's all surface. Butthole. You know, and if, you know, there it is. That's, <laughs> and it's not the same as you know. Sometimes girlfriend gets a little bit, a bit exploratory. That's weird and uncomfortable for me. Right? I'm not okay with that. But she's not scratching an itch because likely the the likelihood of that an happening itch. at the same uh, time is like, oh, <laughs> hey, you know, what are you gonna do? So you're sitting around, uh, sitting on the couch, and you're like, oh, my butthole's kind of itchy. Hey, baby, here, rub on that a bit. That's not gonna happen. Because more than likely, when that comes up, she's not gonna be around anyway, so you're not even gonna have the opportunity to ask. God, I wish you had been here 20 minutes ago. I had a really itchy butthole. Yeah, right? Oh man, a dime for every time I've said that to a girl. Yeah, you're lucky. What's next on that list? Sexy baby. Yesterday I saw a sexy baby. What? Sexy baby. Like? That baby was sexy. Stripper baby? Well, getting there. It was a uh, three or four year old girl. Uh, I say three or four years old, not in the context of, uh, oh, I'm getting older, so all children are very, very young. She was not waist high, wearing inch and a half heels. I'm sorry, what? It was a three or four year old girl wearing inch and a half heels. They were not play shoes. In public. In public with her parents. Not on television. I wanted to puke. This is a very twisty part of the road here. Jeez. She was not dressed in any kind of Jean Bonnet kind of outfit, makeup, teeth caps kind of thing. It was just, she was dressed in normal clothes, but the heels, it just freaked me out. Yeah, yeah, there's three, four years old, I don't know. It's, I didn't dwell on it very long, although I did give the mom the, 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 the devil look. Well, yeah, because she's clearly a terrible person. Uh, <laughs> a terrible person. Yeah. The, the yeah. thing that, You heard me, mothers out there putting your three to four year olds in heels. You're terrible people. This whole thing is just about the fact that that lady yelled at you for wearing that spit roast Miley Cyrus t-shirt, isn't it? Well, she's 18 now, isn't she? I, I don't know. I See? don't think so. It's I okay. don't think she is. That didn't say Miley Cyrus, that said Billy Ray. Oh, that's right, that's right. Good, good. For a second there, I thought you were weird. 
We're traveling along here. I've now caught up with somebody who has their head on their shoulders straight and they're only going 15 miles an hour down the very twisty road. Here's a curve that might as well be a 90 degree intersection. When you said the word sexy baby or whatever, uh, getting rid of the baby part, you know what boggles my mind is that there are people out there who get paid insane amounts of money just because they look good. They get paid to be sexy. Models, like, you look good. Here's fantastic sum of money. Go wear this in front of those people and just remind them that they won't have as much money as you and also not look as good. So let's double fuck everyone else in the world. I just read an article about a girl from Indiana. She is, I think, 15 now. She's been modeling for a couple of years. She is now the new it girl. She has a look that everyone wants. The, the, the topic of the article was not about the girl, but about the idea of how it is that the it people become the it people. And somebody saw her and concluded, that's the look I'm going for with the clothes that I want modeled. That's what I want somebody else sees that person use that girl so then they want her and it's just a chain of now that's we want that girl to be our look the interesting thing I thought about it was, was how they were so very blatant referring to this girl essentially as a piece of meat making comments about how she really isn't all that beautiful but her face has a shape that for some arbitrary reason is the look they want right now and that was a really weird thing to have these people as they're being interviewed describe this this person as a, essentially just a piece of meat and acknowledge that yes we know we talk about people like they're just chattel but everybody in that industry is already aware that, that that's just how it goes it's like uh, in a normal workplace uh, touching is inappropriate uh, <laughs> sexual comments are not approved of and worthy of dismissal but in a kitchen and in a restaurant somehow you can ask anybody that works in a kitchen and a restaurant most people will say oh but it's a kitchen and a restaurant it's completely it's normal like what what a yarn oh bicyclist on our side of the road very careful uh, I think we're riding past the place with the horses north of Harbor Springs oh yeah I'm told they have several different corrals. <coughs> One corral is for uh, horse riders, and the other corral is for the uh, horse fuckers. The difference in size between the two corrals is surprisingly not amazing. I'm particularly interested in the fact that the fucker corral is twice the size of the rider corral. Yeah. There's a lot of fuckers out there today. <laughs> there is. Horse fuckers. Well, here we go. We're on our way home, uh, sitting on the Arnold boat uh, from St. Ignace to Mackinac Island. It's uh, going to be catching the 830 boat. We're on the 830 boat. Uh, we just are not, on the 830 a, boat. We'll be technically we're on the 828 boat. In two minutes, it'll be the 830 boat. The uh, right. Let's see. In Petoskey, we stopped at uh, City Park Grill. Uh, learned about a man who hanged himself which is apparently the that's the only correct yeah, yeah. you're right yep uh, term for that and then uh, they named a beer after him which Cold. made ordering that beer very awkward yeah but well it's, we already said it's the city park grill so why don't we just go tell people that it's hanging frank and that's that's the, the name yeah. of the beer yeah. it's, it's name it's of the IPA place, name of the beer I want I want to try one, but it, that seemed awkward. And then we stopped by uh, Chandler's, a restaurant. Uh, stopped by, saw friends. Uh, had a couple of I had a couple of bass. Chairman, you had a couple of Pabst. Yeah, and then uh, we magically materialized from Chandler's to St. Ignis via our teletransporter. Except for the teletransporter, um, didn't make read, a good read, stop. Our, read, our, read our minds and knew that we wanted those uh, Burger King chicken sandwiches. Made a pit stop at the Burger King, got some uh, processed chicken sandwiches. Those, those were. <laughs> uh, well, I still look forward to mine. 
I am loving mine right now as it is resting in my belly. And uh, then we stopped at the uh, Mackinac Grill and uh, had a drink there. And then uh, the teletransporter delivered us to the boat. It's funny how those work through televisions. I mean, it's not a normal tra- transporter, it's a teletransporter. People laugh at me why it is, and ask me why it is that I have a newer car, but insist on carrying around a 1983 former rental Curtis Mathis 19-inch glass pane front television. And little do they realize is that it has that been retrofitted by some steampunks into a steampunk teletransporter. Yeah, I need to feed it some coal, pour, some, pour, pour a little bit of water into it. And listen to some, uh, listen to some buzzcocks. It's got the steam I needed to put the punk in. Yeah, so sitting here on a boat, killing some time. Oh, I got some artwork. <laughs> I, I had lent my car out. Meat mountains. To a friend. Uh, they picked up apparently some, uh, masonite oil painting. Uh, it's a very simple frame. Uh, they must have picked it up while they were out and about borrowing the car at a garage sale. Uh, quite frankly, the artwork is a uh, wintertime scene, I'm guessing, in the sunset of some heavy mountains. Is that a sunset? Uh, why would the mountains be so red if it weren't? Oh, that's true. Uh, forget that's the yellowing, because the yellowing is the, I'm guessing it's the shellac or whatever used yellowed. It used to be yeah. clear, but nonetheless, the mountains are very it. bright red. And the end result is that the mountains look like a beef roast. Heavily marbled. Yeah, it's actually astounding in that sense that it, there are uh, some chalets in the foreground and a couple of nice happy trees, as Bob Ross would say. But man, oh man, those mountains in the background almost look like they were intended to be choice cuts of meat. It's yeah, disturbing in a way. Yeah, it's like he started out with a still life, and he was like, "Hey, I bet I can make these mountains." Look, see how he even fades from the the the. Yes, <clears throat> the, the contours into into the green there. See that? Right, and this is a, a glacial. Uh, what do they call those? The the uh, <coughs> the pathways of the glaciers. The, the what? Uh, what the pathways of the glaciers. I, oh, uh, the the oh, you mean the glacial pathways? Uh, sure. Uh, that is nice and fluid and, and smooth, but the source of the glaciers are what appear to be choice cuts of meat that it's not flowing, and it really does kind of just look like beef roast stuck up on top of a, of a mountain, which certainly has me wondering where they came from. Hell, look at this. There's even like a shooting star over here. Or, no, that might that's be a, a scratch. That's a scratch. Well, that's too bad. Why'd you have to disappoint me like that? I was kind of excited about it. Well, first of all, the shooting star is going up. Uh, well, yeah, but you don't know. It's a what, flare. You don't. It's no, a flare. You don't help me. I'm stuck on Meat Mountain. I have <laughs> nothing to eat <laughs> except this huge mountain, and I can't finish this whole thing by myself. No one has a doggy bag this big. <laughs> and if the doggy bag's supposed to be this big, imagine the size of the dog. This thing is beautifully, beautifully vintage. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to walking into Sea Biscuit and. Uh, uh, the other day, I'd like to mention that the that the artist. Oh yes, is it, a, it is signed. It, it is one uh, a dot Arniker. Mm. Arniker, Arniker or Arniger? Oh, sure. Well, I'm gonna go with Arniker, but I'm no, no, because there's two. No, it's Arniger. Because there's no U after the double Q. Mm. Oh, double Qs. Well, they look like Qs since. Um, they're not double story G's, and they shoot out to the right of the viewer's eyes. So, if I saw either of those, I would say they were either awkwardly leaning nines or uh, lowercase Q's. Are double Q's supposed to be followed with a double U? You heard the horn. Yeah. We're gonna get rolling here. <laughs> well, I'm moving. So says the captain. Yeah, he's yelling out the window. Hey, untie my lines. Recording our conversations? <laughs> well, only now. Oh, okay. <laughs> we weren't until you spoke. She doesn't have to sign a waiver, does she? I'm going to use that. I don't know. 
then again, there was that whole thing at the at Sinclair's the other day that uh, <laughs> with the background music and whether or not we had to pay. Oh right, cash I had cap. to pay royalties. Yeah. What was the name of that show again? Out with the chairman. Out with the chairman. Hey, no, that. Tell me that wasn't the name of the show. Out with the chairman. <laughs> what does that sound like? Like you fucking trying to overthrow me? Out with the chairman. In with the Newman. In with the sofa man. In with the admiral. I've been ha- I've been having a conversation with Zach. <laughs> right. As any wise man would. Yeah. He's funnier than me. Well, we're on our way. Remember, have a visit to makebreakshow.com. Feel free to leave a message or a comment. Uh, email addresses are easy to find there, as well as... Uh, there is actually a forum, and it would be a lot of fun to get some people chiming in on the forum, letting us know what's up. Wait, there's a forum? There is a forum. I've never told you about that, Chairman. There's a forum? We need to push this harder. I, I swear to God, I didn't even know there was a forum. There is. And the boat's getting pretty loud. <laughs> and good night. You have one new message. New message. One. Nor can I be bought by special interests. Learn more at WilsonForUSCongress.com. Help me restore America's greatness. Join us at WilsonForUSCongress.com. Paid for by the Committee to Elect Glenn Wilson for U.S. Congress. Saturday, 8, 08 p.m.